Hello fellow humans, I am making a new series on this channel where I show different projects that I code. In this video, I will be showing you a gravity simulator that I coded in vanilla JavaScript using the HTML canvas. There are some bugs in it because I didn't look up how to do anything in this project. But in all, I think it is pretty fun. At the end of this video, I will be showing you the code for this, but you don't have to watch that part if you just want to see the project's final results. The basics of the website are that you click to place a planet, scroll to change the mass and radius of the planet, and press F to fix the planet in place. This means that it won't get pushed or pulled by other planets. You can press space to pause slash unpause the simulation. On the right, there is the settings area. The bar on the right of the settings area contains different sprites that you can choose for your planets. The sprites have no effect on the actual interactions of the planet, they just make it look cool. Like socks! To the left of that bar, we have the mass of the planet. Unlike when you scroll, when you change it manually, the mass doesn't change in relationship to the radius, and vice versa. The mass affects how much this planet pulls other planets, and how it resists the gravity of other planets. It also affects whether a planet pushes it, or it pushes the planet. Underneath, there is the radius input. The radius changes how large the planet is. If you set the radius to a negative number, it turns into dark matter. Ooh. Dark matter does not have a collision. It also is purple, like socks. Some socks. Also, if you set the mass to negative, the planet will push away other planets with a positive mass and attract planets with a negative mass. Usually, if you scrolled into the negatives, both the mass and the radius would be negative, which means it would have no collisions and push away at normal planets. But by changing the mass and radius values manually, you can set one positive and one negative, which does fun stuff. Lastly, there's the type of mass. Normal is the one I have been talking about this whole time. Destructive is where when another planet touches it, that planet gets obliterated. Like, s no, never mind. Unstable makes the planet very unstable. This means that when another planet touches it, it explodes and shoots all other planets away from it. Explosive is also like that, but it just doesn't disappear when it explodes. It just stays there. That is all of the settings, I think. Also, that arrow next to the settings collapses the settings, too. Now you can sit back and see some cool things, like socks. I like socks. I hope you enjoyed that montage. I posted this on my website so you can play this for yourself at pigsquiggle.netlify.app. The link will be in the description. Also, thank you for watching this video. It isn't over just yet, but I'll be posting more videos like this soon, so if you enjoyed this one, be sure to subscribe. I'm also having a subscriber war with my friend who's posting Roblox videos, so I want to prove that coding videos are better. Now I'll show you the code. I won't go into great detail about it, I'll just show you different sections and explain what they do. You can stop watching now if you aren't interested in this part, but it would be cool if you would. The app that I use to code my gravity simulator is called WebStorm. Uh, it's my go-to coding editor. I just like using it because I'm really used to it. On the side here, you can see all of the projects I've worked on. Uh, this folder is my gravity simulator, and you can see all these files have are the different sprites for the planets. All of the code is in this one file. It is 542 lines long, and most of that is JavaScript. Uh, all of this part that I'm highlighting right now is JavaScript. That's around 400 lines. Um, so this part right here is all HTML. This is to make the structure of the website. Right here is the sprite editor on the side, and here is the type of mass you can choose. 
here's the mass input, here's the radius input, and here's the arrow that collapses it. This is the thing in the corner you may have seen. Uh, it's a link to the itch.io page, uh, which has the gravity thing on it. Um, it's not updated yet, but it is mostly updated. The only thing it's missing is the explosion type of matter. And up here is all of the styling. So this just makes the website look cool. Uh, most of this, I think all of it, is for the settings panel because the planets don't need styling. I styled that in JavaScript. So I use the HTML canvas to make this. The HTML canvas is a thing you can draw on, and it has many different commands you can draw on with. You can make rectangles, you can make circles, you can make socks, you can make all types of images. Um, so here in the JavaScript is where I declare all my variables. This is where I just reference all of the things I need to know from the HTML in the JavaScript. This is the data for the planets. This is the current mass and radius. All this stuff is just more variables you can probably figure out from the variable names. Right here, it's for the code for starting to place a planet. And here is the actual code for placing a planet. This involves it would be shorter, but this involves more code because I need to sense dragging back to give the planet velocity, as you may have seen in the gameplay. Down here is setting the mouse cursor position variable. Here is sensing when you right click, uh, that deletes a planet in the game. So the way you make a planet is you click, and the way you delete one is you right click. This is just the right click. Here is sensing if you press space, it pauses or unpauses the game. If you press R, it reloads the whole site. And if you press F, that sets the lock, that makes the planet locked, as I told you before. Here is, you can see it says wheel. This means when you scroll, it changes the size and radius of the planet, and it changes them in ratio to each other. So if the radius is like half of the mass, then when you scroll it, the radius will keep being half of the mass unless you change it manually and vice versa. This function sets the texture of the planet and here is where most of the code goes on. This is where like all of the, f this is just runs every frame. So this is where all of the collisions and the velocity and everything goes on. So this is just to sense if a uh, planet has glitched out, it just deletes the planet so it doesn't crash the whole page. This is the code for giving a planet velocity. It's very little code, uh, but it just checks the distance between two planets and gives one velocity based on their mass and their distance toward the other planet. This part is all the collisions. So the collisions took a while because I couldn't figure out some stuff. I was having some issues. Uh, it's very messy code, by the way. This checks if it's unstable or explosive, and exp uh, shoots other planets away when it touches, and if it's unstable, it breaks it, and this does the same thing just for other planets. Um, this sets it so if it is destructive or unstable, it deletes the current planet. And then this is all moving back if there's a collision. So what it does is it finds the ratio of x to y uh, positions and simplifies it and then it pushes the planet away from the other planet in that ratio so that since they're perfect spheres it's very easy to, de to detect collisions you just check the distance between the two points and see if it's less than the radius of both the planets combined and this just moves it away until it's not colliding anymore so that's just w the code for the collisions and this makes it so the more it collides, the less velocity it has. So like if it collides into a huge planet, it'll lose most of its velocity. If, but if it collides into a small one, it'll keep its velocity. So that's why they don't clump up in orbs because they keep their part of their velocity. And this is all just sensing if the current planet has more mass than the planet it's colliding with or if it has less mass, or if it has equal mass. You can see this is the equal mass, and this is the less mass, and this is the more mass. Down here, it senses if it's paused, and just pauses the game, and then this renders the whole thing. This clears the frame, 
and this is all just styling so if it's dark matter it styles it purple like socks and if it's uh, normal matter it makes it light gray you don't really see this except in the dark matter because i put a texture over the normal matter this makes that border when it's locked around the planet so that you know it's locked this colors the planet border based on what type of mass it is this part right here if the planet is a dark matter it will just make the arc of purple so the arc is just the circle uh, and if it's not it will draw the texture instead of making the circle and here it just renders uh, and makes the arc around your pointer as so you can see how big your planet you're going to place is just as a tool and this part is all just for making the circle around your pointer it just makes the circle when you drag back that makes two circles and it, it colors the border based on whatever type of mass it is and this is just seeing what type of mass it is and coloring the border accordingly and that is it i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in my next video goodbye